Hey everybody, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, we're going to talk about Light Key. Not only are we going to talk about it, but we're going to teach you the basics of getting started with Light Key. Now, this is updated for Light Key 3.0, which is new at the time. Uh, if you are following along at home with this tutorial, check below for my download link for Light Key. This is an affiliate link, which just means if you buy, I get a commission, but at no additional cost to you off of just going to the Light Key site and buying it. So you might as well do it, right? If you want to run lights on a Mac, Light Key has become a really popular choice. And I'm really happy to say it finally, after you know a rough start, it really meets my expectations as to what I look for in a lighting console. Is it the perfect console for everyone? No, you can check out my review for that and also my video about uh, five reasons why light key is not right for you. But for a lot of people who are just beginning with lighting, it is a great fit. And so let's dive in and start using light key. All right, when we first open light key, we want to go ahead and start a new project. Now, a couple things to note about, and I'm going to talk about hardware in just a second, but uh, if you haven't bought Likey, if you haven't purchased it, you've just downloaded it and you can get it from my link below, then your Likey license here will be valid for 24 channels. That's their current, what they allow you to use for free. You can patch stuff. You can patch more than 24 channels um, and play around with the software. You just can't control that many lights till you purchase. So it'll be, uh, it'll let you know here and you can buy or renew your license in this area. Now, let's start with a new project. So I'm going to press new project here. Go ahead and give it a name once the name field pops up. Awesome. Just going to give it something really generic like that. And now we're off to the races. So first things first, I want to talk about hardware in Lightkey as we get into things here. Uh, Lightkey has the option of doing USB or network-based protocols. Okay, those are really the two options. So these three, ArtNet, SAC, and an ESPNet, are all network-based uh, lighting protocols. And the difference between the two is the network-based protocols are the way that a lot of people are controlling lighting into the future. They tend to be a little more universal and um, a little more future-proof, but they take a step more to get set up. You have to set it up both here inside of Lightkey as well as with your ArtNet, SACN, or ESP node. On the other hand, when we are talking about a USB device, they are literally plug and play and they'll show up here. So uh, the, the downside to USB is that it's got to be plugged in to the computer and you've got to bring your DMX to the computer, whereas a network based node could be on stage with a computer in a sound booth or elsewhere. Um, and you wouldn't have to bring the DMX all the way back to where the computer's at. Other than that, they're both great options. There's a lot of devices you can use and Lightkey supports um, a lot of different devices. And so uh, I encourage you to check those out. And actually I've got a free bonus that I'm gonna be talking about later in my tutorial videos in the second video to get started with Lightkey MIDI. And after I send you the MIDI one, actually a day later, uh, the system's gonna send you a guide to the different Lightkey hardware. So those are both bundled in there. Actually, I'll pop it up here. You can check that out, get that free bonus and subscribe to that. Um, so you can understand the best way to output for your situation. So I'm gonna go to the capture visualizer to be able to show things to you live as needed in this tutorial. So I'm gonna set this up as SACN on my ethernet adapter and head off to the races. Now, the next thing we've gotta do in light key as a quick start to get started here is patch our lights, okay? That's where we go ahead and we select our universe here and we find our lights in this uh, listing here now. They have like a billion manufacturers in here and a billion different profiles. So it's likely you'll find what you need. If you don't find what you need, you can import them. And the best way to find what you need is to use the search function because there's just so many here. Um, I'm first gonna go here to generic though because I just need some generic PAR washes, just some single channel um, non-LED PARs because my rig here happens to have those as the front light and I have eight of those. So patching is as simple as selecting the light, dragging it in, and then we can go ahead and there's a couple things we can do here. We can change the start address. It'll default be where we dragged it to. The short name, I would make every different type of light a different short name, though you can edit this later. The count, 
This is how many are on that DMX channel, like if you're twofering lights on dimmers, etc. And then patch consecutive is eight because I have eight lights um, on eight different DMX channels. Awesome. For non-generic lights, I'm, these work great. You know, there's a lot of generic lights in here, such as different um, LED strips and LED PARs and stuff like that. But for lights that come from an actual manufacturer, it's easier usually to search. For example, I have these ADJ Inno Pocket Z4s, and I have four of those starting at nine. And so I'm going to go ahead and patch the rest of my rig here just the same way. Um, keeping in mind that I want to keep each type of light on its own short name. And I also want to make sure I'm getting my modes right. So I'm matching the mode here that I want to run my lights at so that I everything works good. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish that up real quick. Awesome. Now that we're done patching, we'll press next. This wizard is great. It, it really walks you through the stuff that you need to know. Awesome. And we can see here in the visualizer that... Uh, everything turned on. And so this is what happens in light key. You want to be careful about this if you're hooked up to your rig, um, especially if you've got conventional lights. Um, just keep in mind that the second you pop in here, they're all going to come on. So if there's people on stage or whatever, you might want to give them a warning um, so that you know all your stuff, yeah, they know it's going to just flash on here. And so this is where we're going to build our light key preview. Okay. So simply put, all you do is basically make either a top-down or a front-facing preview, how your stage looks. Most people are going to choose the top-down, but some people are going to do the front. And hey, I don't blame you. So we'll go ahead and just grab our different lights here so the pars go out front here. I'm just going to get them generally in their positions on stage. doesn't have to be perfect to start. You can always adjust this later as well. So these guys actually are split, two on each side. And then the bars are in the back. Now, one of the really cool things about this preview is that you're able to go ahead and bring in different shapes. So on the side here, I'm going to start with a rectangle and use that as my stage, you know, to, to show where my stage is. Then I can bring in some truss. There's also a lot of other shapes here. There's these different images of people and stuff. I um, mean, light trees, mic stands, all kinds of good stuff. So actually, let's give ourselves a drummer just for a frame of reference here. Make it so he's not 10 feet tall. Oh, no, he's a little bigger than that. You can also bring in your own images via that image tab that I was just showing you. And so you can literally, if you want to make it like dead perfect, you can bring in an image of your stage overhead that you took, like a picture. Uh, let me work with that, but I'm just going to bring some trusses in here. So you can see it's real simple just to go ahead, whoop, you know, drag out my truss. Go ahead and drag out another one. I've got a back truss. It's worth noting there that I just copied and pasted with uh, Apple C or Command C and Command V. Then I've got these vertical trusses here. There's one, and there's, once we grab it, put him in his place. So where am I? I'm about the second unit, about halfway through. Again, um, this this guy, this preview, it really is just a preview. The actual uh, effects that the lights run and stuff don't really depend on this preview. So keep in mind that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to give you a general idea so that you can look at this preview right here as you're programming and saying, hey, I want that light. You pick it, you identify it, and when you click on it, you get the light that you thought you were going to get. It really doesn't have to be something um, that you go crazy on, and um, and so, you know, you're good to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just leave it like this. This is representative enough of what I'm doing. It's not perfect. So we'll press next here, and our next step is to group selected fixtures. Now, what light key does, which I'm not a big fan of, is they only let you put a light in one group. I know I say this in every light key tutorial I do. So if I select, for example, my six bars, and then I put them in a group with this uh, icon right here, then they're in that group. If I wanted to do a second group that was like half the bars, like the center 
in these two outers and then the outer inner inner outer. So I had two groups of them that I could work with. I wouldn't be able to make two groups and then make the one separate group. But for what like key is, it's a good program and we can kind of work around this as we get on with programming, specifically using the keyboard shortcuts available. So I'm just going to go ahead and make some groups for my different lights. One, two, three, four. Group those guys. Group all my front lights as well. I'm just using the shift key to select multiple lights here. And then these moving heads right here. Awesome. So that makes our groups. Then we'll go ahead. We will press next on the wizard. And now we can set our light beam directions. So this is really the last uh, important step of the initial setup of light key. And the cool thing about it, I'll show you it with one of my lights here, is especially when you're working with moving lights and you, pre you highlight them all and press set, it actually goes and it points the light in the direction that it thinks it's going to point. Then you match it up, you calibrate it per se, and then you press next. So I, I pointed my light, this arrow here on the screen, to match what my light was doing in the visualizer. And then I can go ahead, nice and easy, once it wakes up here, it's going to spin the moving light, okay, in a certain direction. And now I can see that it's actually opposite as to what's happening here, so I can flip it. Now, they're moving the same way. I can see that. I can verify it visually. Now I'm good to go. Next, you can set a limit if you want to limit where the movement of the light goes. I'm not a big fan on this, um, and I talk about it a lot in my tutorials, both here as well as inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, that... When you set limits, um, I'm just not a fan of it because you can't overcome them if you want to. As opposed to working smart with your programming, um, you can basically have limits, but if you need to exceed them, if you need to point the light somewhere that you didn't think you wanted to, you totally can later. So again, you can drag these around to set limits. I'm not a big fan of it myself. And then last, the perspective. How do we look at the light? The default is uh, from above basically is the default, but if you're looking from the front, etc., you can change that here. So as you do that, you notice they get checked off here. So for example, I can do this with my bars. They're a non-moving fixture. So for that, you just choose the light beam representation that makes the most sense for the way the light's pointing and how you're looking at it. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of my lights real quick. And uh, then we'll be back in our next tutorial. We'll start about the talking about the basics of programming. Again, like I mentioned in the start of this video, folks, if you want to dive deeper with Likey, I've got a guide on MIDI control. And also on the second day, I will send you um, the guide to what hardware is available for Likey and how to choose the best one for you. So get both of those. Sign up for the email here. And I will see you guys in the next video where we talk about programming basics in Lightkey. I'll see you there. Thanks.